Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Christy. If you are new and if you are not new and you're returning, um, hi, it's been a while. I haven't been posting um, very much lately and it's because I've been very sick. So uh, I'm, I'm feeling better now and I think I have the energy to do all the things plus keep you guys in the loop. So today's vlog is kind of a little bit of everything. Um, tonight I'm actually going to do a recipe that I believe I have shared on this um, channel before, but I'm doing it as a freezer meal prep. Um, so I'm making extra to stock in my freezer because one thing I've learned when I was sick is on a homestead, um, you need to have stuff that is fast food. Um, when even when you're not feeling good, you got to make a meal for the for everybody. I'm slowly trying to stock up in my freezer, and so I'm going to make these this recipe that's really really simple. It's just a few ingredients, and there's a couple of variations as well. Um, and also, I wanted to share with you some updates. I have decided that since lettuce is ridiculously expensive, and sometimes we cannot get it, or it's just not very great quality. As of lately, I have decided to set up my tower garden. Um, so I did start some seeds in my basement. I've actually been rearranging my house and trying to get ready for the flower farm um, seed starting that's going to be happening here in like a month. So I'm trying to get organized and I decided let's just get some seeds started and start growing lettuce and hydroponically in my tower garden. So I'll share with you what I'm doing. This is the first time in many years that I've done, I've grown inside with this thing. I have grown outdoors before many years ago, mostly celery. Um, so I'm not really, I'm still new to the whole hydroponic thing, but I'm going to give it a shot. And anyway, so here's some, there's some clips here. So I am growing in a tower garden. Um, this tower garden, when I purchased, purchased it, it was through Juice Plus. And so this is hydroponic and I uh, start the seeds in rock wool. And this is like a seed starting tray that comes with this tower garden. I'm not affiliated with it. This is an older model. Um, I'm not sure if they've changed it or not. I've had it for several years and uh, I, I did enjoy it when I did use it before. So we're going to give it a go. Um, the first thing that I uh, remember to do is to saturate the rock wool. I actually took it to the sink because this was definitely not enough water. It takes a lot of water um, into the rock wool. So um, I wanted that nice and saturated. And then basically what I need to do is fill each of these little indents with seeds um, once the rock wool is nice and hydrated. Now for the seeds, I found some original lettuce, gourmet lettuce, and some of my my own gourmet lettuce that I have from West Coast Seeds. This is a newer seed packet. The original one, um, the one I had previously picked up, it actually came with my tower garden, so it is quite old seed. So I seeded it fairly heavy, as you could see, and now what I'm doing is I'm covering in the seeds with vermiculite. Now this vermiculite actually came with my tower garden. It a little bit goes a very, very long way, and it's just to help with the moisture and um, just holding things in place, especially once I um, plant these into the garden itself once they have established a little bit more. So basically I just went through and I, I covered all of the little indents and I am putting this humidity dome over and we're going to wait for them to germinate. I don't have any of the uh, solution, like the nutrients. I'm just running clean water. Um, I'm using structured water. We have structured water in our home. Uh, uh, our whole house is run on structured water. And so I'm running this to get rid of the any other chlorine or whatnot. Usually with structured water, it doesn't matter. But I do love my view in my new grow room. I can see my horses and of course the garden, which I love. And we don't have a lot of snow, but we had one heck of a snowstorm later that day. It got pretty miserable. Winter conditions definitely are here. We've had some really cold weather. It has been minus 45 degrees Celsius wind chills. The buses did not run yesterday morning. 
Um, and so we've just had a lot of really cold days. I've been keeping the fire going steady. Even with our fire going in, in and heating the whole house and it's really, really hot, our furnace still wouldn't stop running because of the wind. Um, the, the wind was just brutal. And so I've had my chickens locked up and the horses, um, they were getting extra feed and heated water. They always get heated water, but um, it's, it was just really a hard few days on everything. So far, so good. We're, we're doing okay. I was really sick. Tyson was sick. Chaz was sick. So we're all on the mend. Um, I still have a really bad cough. Um, it actually kind of, it hurts to talk. <laughs> uh, so I do have to be careful and drink some tea and honey and do some elderberry syrup and stuff like that still. But I'm on the mend. I got three different bugs all at the same time and it just knocked me out. Um, being autoimmune, it just had all kinds of things going on. So that was fun. Um, I hadn't been sick in a long time. So I, hopefully that's the end of it and no more. I hope nobody, none, I hope you, you and nobody in your household got sick because it's not fun. Um, and if you are, I, so I hope you are on the mend and feeling better soon. So I'm going to get cooking. So what I'm making tonight is a four ingredient dinner. It can be a dinner or an appetizer, um, or not a dinner, but a protein for the dinner. And so I'm gonna do two variations of it. I'm gonna use coconut sugar in one variation of it um, because it's a sweet and spicy bacon wrapped uh, chicken. So to this little silver bowl, I added three quarters of a cup or three fourths <laughs> um, of a cup of coconut sugar. And um, to this other dish, I'm going to add three, quor three quarters of a cup or three fourths of a cup of um, brown sugar. Now this is homemade brown sugar. I cannot get organic uh, brown sugar or organic cane sugar. So I order mine in in bulk and I mix molasses with um, organic cane sugar and I make my own. So I'm just going to add into this bowl three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Now, I'm just doing this to demonstrate that it doesn't matter. My preference is actually the coconut sugar because it gets a really nice crispy outside and the flavor is really nice. But if you like that little bit more sweetness, um, the brown sugar is definitely would be the preferred. While I was uh, organizing, I found these little clay puck things that go in your brown sugar and it's to prevent the sugar from getting hard and clumpy. So I'm going to do a Cajun variation of this. I think the original recipe come from Rachel Ray and she did uh, like a chili powder and sugar. I like the Cajun and sugar better. So what I'm going to do to my three quarters of a cup of sugar is I'm going to add two tablespoons of Cajun, like just a Cajun blend. This is from Organic Matters where I get my herbs and seasoning blends in bulk. Um, they're, everything they have is organic, which I can't get most of this stuff anywhere near where I live. So it makes it really, really convenient. But I'm just adding two tablespoons to each of these bowls. So each three quarter of a cup of sugar has two tablespoons of, um, of the Cajun seasoning. And so as you can see, it blends in really nicely. I like it really heavily seasoned. Sometimes I do add garlic or onion or I've even tried to do the barbecue, like a barbecue powdered seasoning before and it was really good. It just had a very different flavor. Um, but I my preferred one is definitely the Cajun. I like the Cajun and so does my family. This mixture as well, sometimes if I have extra, I just put it in the freezer and then pull it out for the next time I make it and it keeps very, very well or you can put it on um, I use it as a rub like a marinade and it works really really well so so next I need some bacon um, I normally would prefer the very thin sliced bacon so I can cut them um, like I can either stretch them out and cut them in to three pieces or I can cut them in half this bacon is quite thick I had ordered two cases of bacon last year and this is the beat, or like I'm just beginning to use the second case. 
Um, it lasted a very, very long time. So I had, I think it was, I ended up using about 25 or, or 24 pieces of bacon and I cut them in half. Way thicker than I prefer. Again, I like to stretch these meals out. Technically, one piece of, or well, two pieces of bacon will work for about one third of a chicken breast, which is, that's what I would do as a serving or count as a serving. Um, so you can stretch chicken and bacon a long ways, especially when I paid $30 for a case of bacon that I bought a year ago and <laughs> I'm stretching it even further, um, getting as much out of this as possible. And I also got these chicken breasts on sale I ordered a case of chicken breasts, um, and actually I ordered a couple, and this is the like part of, I think it was like a quarter of the case that was left over um, I wanted to use up, and I ended up using five chicken breasts to make two freezer meals and supper tonight, so that was, it, it made quite a lot, um, and I used 20 pieces of bacon, um, and then you know, the sugar I used total one and a half cups. Um, I ended up blending them together later. You'll see that in the video and four tablespoons of seasoning. So it really, it come together really, really easy. Not a lot of ingredients go into it, but you can really stretch this a very long way. I typically like to make more than what we have for supper. Um, because these make really great leftovers. One of Tyson's jobs um, before he switched jobs this year, um, he used to actually walk through the bush and like, um, mark, um, mark out, um, right of ways and different things for forestry and, um, for logging companies. So they know where their boundaries are. And so he would walk out in the bush and it's kind of a lot because there's usually lots of snow and I really like making these because they do taste good warm or cold and he could take them with him um, and they're a really good protein for him that you know he, he would enjoy and actually eat it. So to make these, it's really simple. You just roll a piece of bacon around a chunk of chicken. <laughs> I do find that the frozen chicken breasts usually work a little bit better. They don't get as dry as a fresh chicken breast. I don't know why that is because there is so much like the bacon. I would, you would think it would make it nice and moist, but I find that frozen chicken and frozen seasoned chicken works the best um, for this recipe. I'm, I'm just, I find the flavors are a little bit better and the, um, the texture is usually a little bit better when they are, um, the chicken has at least been frozen before it gets cooked in this way. Um, just something that my, I've noticed my family seems to like better. Don't know why, very random, very strange, but it just, it's just how it works out. So, um, as you can see, these, this bacon is super thick and I would definitely recommend not using bacon this thick. Um, I just wanted to use it up because bacon doesn't have a very long freezer, freezer shelf life. Um, I don't typically like to keep bacon more than six months and this is just about 13 months that I've had this bacon in the freezer. So I would like to get it you know, used in some way, even though it's going back in the freezer, it's just, um, you know, I'm using what I have and that's basically, um, why I, I think if it was the thin stuff, I have cut them into like thirds and you, cause the thinner sliced bacon, you can really stretch it. Like it like physically stretch the, the meat out and it'll like, you can wrap it tighter and it seems like the tighter the wrap also has a better flavor with those thinner slices. So you just have to play around with it. Um, a variation you could do is if you don't like chicken and say you wanted to do fish, you could do fish or, um, like salmon chunks or, um, you know, even walleye is good shrimp you could try shrimp doing it this way just change the protein um, you could probably even do cauliflower like i mean i think there's really no limitation 
um, anything wrapped in bacon is probably good. Um, what it, it, you know, whatever floats your boat, just try it. It's pretty interchangeable. And I have, like I said, I've done the seasonings. I've changed up the seasonings. You could do pretty much any seasoning you want. Um, with as long as it goes good with the sugar, because the sugar gives it a really nice crispy texture. And the coconut sugar is what I prefer um, because of the texture and it has the right amount of sweetness. It's not over sweet, but it's de- just completely up to you. The sky is the limit. Just do whatever floats your boat and whatever you got in your pantry. So now I'm just going to take the pieces that I have wrapped up and I'm going to roll them in the sugar Cajun mixture. And um, we're just going to coat all of the sides. I want to make sure I get the ends nice and coated. And then I like to leave, um, I kind of press it on top. So I have a little bit of like a crust almost on top of the wrap itself or like the bacon itself. So um, it has a nice texture. I like that crunch, the crunchy caramelized um, texture that it has and then that nice tender juicy chicken on the inside it makes it it's just it, it's a texture thing if you like texture you would probably really like this recipe because it has all the good things <laughs> it has, it's got it all going for it so um yeah I find it works really well to just press it and then just gently set it in without tipping. Like don't don't knock off all the excess stuff. You want to keep that flavor on on these um, because that makes a really nice crunchy, almost like a candied outside. It's so good. Um, definitely, the more of the powdery stuff that you leave on top, the more texture, crispiness that it gets with that bacon which is why I much prefer the coconut sugar because it makes just a little bit better texture than the sugar sugar. But the sugar, again, it does. it is much sweeter. If you like that sweeter, go for the sugar. If you like more texture, less sweetness, go for the coconut sugar. You would never tell the difference in flavor. You would never know. Um, just the only way you would know is the sweetness, like the level of how it affects your tongue tasting the sweetness. So um, the guys can't tell. I usually mix them. I mix both of them, both sugars together to get the best of both worlds and just to stretch my ingredients a little bit further. Um, But either one works just fine. So this is making quite a few. This pan that I'm putting into, I'm going to be popping this into the oven for supper tonight. And I don't like to put them too close together so they get a nice crispiness, but I'm just popping it in the oven. So I put it in the oven at 375 and until it is done. Um, I, I don't know the time, what to tell you for time. You just got to check it. Uh, so this pan is what I'm going to put in my freezer. So this is going to be one of my freezer meals. This pan, um, I use it all the time for, um, from the freezer to the oven and it works really, really good. It's the perfect size for our family of three, um, to make these and have some extras for leftovers as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I actually mixed both of the sugars together and you can see the texture. It's really good texture. It's like a shake and bake. And uh, yeah, it it just, that's my preferred. I actually like it the best with both both sugars combined. Um, But again, I still always lean towards that coconut sugar. It just makes a really good texture. I like it a lot. So yeah, it's the same process. I'm going to fill this tray and I actually did another one. I did this one and one more about the same size and they both ended up going into the freezer. I should mention the amount of sugar that I used in Cajun that I used was perfect for five chicken breasts and 20 slices of bacon. Absolutely perfect. It was like to the very last little tiny bit, I had no no leftovers. So to prepare this for the freezer, what I do is I just cover it with some aluminum foil and just make sure it's all nice and um, snug so that it doesn't you know, fall off or whatnot, rip. And I always make sure to label what I'm putting in the freezer because you never do remember 
This is, I'm just writing Cajun chicken thingies because that's what my family calls these as chicken thingies. And I know it's a weird name, but that's what we know them as. So I have these oversized freezer bags that they're ginormous. I don't know the size of them exactly, but I reuse them over and over and over because they fit these casserole dishes just perfectly. And it's just a protection, like another, an extra barrier. They don't actually get dirty, so I can use them over and over and over as long as I don't rip, rip them. And they fit just perfect. So let's go take these to the freezer. Yes, that's a hot water tank on my step. We had my hot water tank blew up in our house and we got a new one. So that was fun as well. So we'll put this in the freezer. I am trying to get organized and organize all my food in these freezers. And it's just such a mess in here. Like I'm trying so hard. Um, I need to spend a good day or two organizing my freezers. Um, but we're just, it's that time of the year where I have a bunch of canning that needs to get done. And I need to just kind of go through everything and in inventory and just get it done make the time to do it so anyway there's one of them in the freezer we have a whole bunch of other goodies to go through i should show you these are when i have extra leftovers so like say i'm gonna cook these tonight and i have i have leftovers what i do is i pop them into these these lunch kits and i make a complete lunch um so then the guys can just grab one of them and take them put them in their bag or put them in the truck and go to work and um, it works really really well I have not had to buy anything for lunches um, at all and so that took a big portion of our food budget for school and work lunches and eliminated it which is fantastic because I don't have to grow it and I don't have to buy it it's extra and yeah I have a ton most of the stuff in this freezer has to be canned or preserved still and this one I have, it's a mix. It's just so much to go through. So January is going to be busy. January is January. And I'm going to have a lot going on that month um, to catch up on a lot of my food preservation. So, and for those wondering about the orphan bottle baby kittens, this is one of them. He likes to come out in the car garage. We have a little doggy door. He likes to come and hang out with the other animals and uh, whatnot. So I was looking to figure out what I'm going to serve for supper with this as a vegetable since um, I'd never got to town. I noticed I need to get some more ham and stuff canned up and I'm just, I need to get this organized and do my inventory and do a bunch more canning because I'm getting low and uh, just not, I'm not on the on the ball this year. Not at all. So I settled on corn. I'm going to cook corn with this dinner and uh, we'll get that going. And here's Mr. Ned. This is special Ned. And he is, he can smell the stuff on my fingers. <laughs> He's, he uh, definitely loves his scratches and snuggles. He's a good boy. And for those wondering if the other orange kitten that the other bottle baby is doing okay, they're doing great. We still have both of them. They need to go into the vet here soon. Um, and they're growing like weeds and they have claimed Chaz's armchair. So back to cooking. This is the other pan that I prepared to put into the freezer. So I had, like I said, two freezer meals out of this. And all I was doing was cooking dinner. So I made extra. So I had another protein that was just, I was able to grab out of the freezer and cook it. So I can either thaw them out when I want to cook them, like pull them out in the morning and then um, let them thaw and then throw them in the oven when I'm ready to cook them. Or I can also cook them straight from the freezer um, and cook them frozen. I cook them at 375 and I would say about 40 minutes. But it depends on your oven and depends on how thick your bacon is and how big your chicken chunks are. So I would just get a thermometer and, and gauge it that way. So I did some reorganizing in my kitchen and I have my baking supplies moved around. I don't know what to do with all of this extra 
um, whole wheat flour. I ordered extra accidentally in my bulk order. Any suggestions, please send them at me. We don't like brown bread. <laughs> okay, so let's check and see how these are going. Um, they got a bit to go. They're starting to get that crispiness on the top. And uh, so we're just going to let them cook a little longer. It smells so good in here. Oh, I wish there was smell of vision You would love it. I swear to you. It is amazing. Bacon and sugar and Cajun, like nothing gets better than that. I wanted to show you something that I found is actually making my life a lot easier when it comes to organization. I am, I hate cleaning. I hate it. And I hate getting organized. I like being organized. And I, I like knowing where stuff is. And a lot of the times I can find it in the chaos, but um, I just, I like having things where they go. And I'm finding that we haven't moved in a long time. And when we move, you declutter and you throw stuff away and you re you pack everything up and you repack it and it gets put away and it has a spot. We haven't moved in a while and it got out of hand. So I've been working on my entire house and it started with me going through the stuff that had flooded um, in our basement. We had the sewer back up this spring. It started with all the stuff that got pulled out of the basement um, that wasn't damaged, that we didn't have to throw away. Um, I had to go through it again. And some of it was stuff from my aunt who had passed away this year, this spring. And it was really hard to do, but I recognized that I have a problem. My house is too full of crap. Um, and so I just, I'm really trying to be mindful of stepping into gratitude of what I do have and not filling all of the nooks and crannies with unnecessary things. Um, and being sentimental sometimes is, you know, it's just sometimes you just gotta let it go. So um, my project, and I'm gonna show you what I've been doing and it's, it's, it's still a big work in progress. And my laundry room has taken me like three days to do because there was so much stuff in here and I've moved it and removed it, but um, I'll show you what I'm, I've got going on. I'm wanting to remove this shelf and I'm gonna move all of those, but I'm moving this shelf up because I wanna put my freeze dryer on this shelf. But these bins, I picked these up on Amazon. I don't have an affiliate link or anything. It's still, it's like, it's like the junk drawer, but dr junk bins. So I have utility, light bulbs. There's some extra stuff that just got tucked in there, but I have all the different light bulbs that we have, like fairy lights and all the light bulbs that just get hucked on a shelf. They just get hucked in a bin. Animal care. I have medicines and collars and um, electrolytes and syringes and medicines all in, in here. And then my candle making supplies. I'll ha I have several bins of these. I have to put them all together. Um, but I found it's really, really helpful. Up here I have crafts and pasta making. So up in here I have all of my pasta making stuff. There's some baking things. So I have my seasonal baking stuff. It all is in that bin. Um, and I'm finding it's so easy because then I can pull it out and take it down. So I haven't been using the system for very long with these bins, but what what I've been, like I, I found it's much easier um, because it's just, sometimes you're just in a rush and in a hurry. And even though they're not like perfectly organized, it still has a spot and it gets put away. And I love that. So um, the little tags, they are actually, um, you write on them with chalk marker and so you can wash them off. And they are not, they did not come with them, but uh, I do, I did order them separately on Amazon and I really like them. So I just thought I would show you cause I think, I think they're really, they're really a nice way to help stay organized um, on the homestead. They come in six packs and I just, I love them. I really do. I use them in my freezer as well for, um, you've seen me use them before in other videos. So I like it. Um, I like the system so far and we'll see how it goes from here. It's not been very long that I've been doing it, but so far 
so good. Stuff gets actually put away. And yeah. Also, one of the things that I'm trying, I haven't got them yet, but I'm trying to go, I learned about them actually from Becky's mom from Acre Homestead. Her mom talked about these detergent, like laundry detergent sheets. And so I'm trying some and I'm, I, I scrubbed off my washing machine here the other, a couple days ago. And it took me so long to get all the soap that spilt off of the top of it. And like, I hate it. <laughs> so I've decided I've enough with the plastic. I'm going to try it. So I'm really looking forward to, to that. So, and I can't wait to get my freeze dryer hooked up again. It doesn't fit here. I wanted to put it by my sink so I could drain it into the sink. Um, but it doesn't fit here. I can't reach behind it to open and close the valve and it just, it's not proper here. So I have to put it on this shelf and reinforce the shelving unit itself. So, cause it's so heavy. Um, but cause the freeze dryer room is going to be my seedling room and that's where the grow tower is as you've seen. So there's so many things happening. This is the time of the year to try to get organized. I want to put my tree up, but, um, I have to get organized first. So that's kind of like dangling the carrot, <laughs> um, the goal to get organized so that I can put Christmas up. I might never get Christmas put up. Oh well, at least my house will be organized, right? So let's go check on the chicken and see how it is browning up. So the chicken is done. I took it out of the grease and just set it onto a plate. And uh, yeah, let's cut into it and see how it looks. Nice and tender and juicy. It had a really great flavor. Tyson could not tell the difference between the two variations. The, the it, it was, it's a really good either way. Doesn't matter, it, it turns out every time and it's very tasty. This is how it looked plated up. I served it with some rice and some corn. We're getting a little carby up in here. Not a great nutritious, healthy supper, but it's what I had because I haven't gone shopping in a while. Um, but it was good. It was really good. Tyson loved it and there was no leftovers. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me and catching up and doing a little bit of this meal prep with me. I hope that it's something that inspires you to try it. It's really, really simple and it's a hit. Um, my family really loves this recipe and it's very versatile. So I hope you do give it a shot and let me know if you do. If you try it, let me know in the comments. Let me know that if you've made it before or not. Um, I guess we probably should have a better name for them than chicken thingies, but that's what my family knows them as. So <laughs> anyway, have a good one, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.